Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this church, Tamarin, Mauritius. So I just want to say that uh, the lockdown has been lifted up here uh, partially, been lifted up here in, in Mauritius. And uh, as from next uh, Sunday, the 4th of July, we will be uh, meeting back in our church building. So uh, just to let you know, wear your mask and uh, follow the protocols that the Mauritian government has given us. And uh, so I'm going to dive straight into the message this morning, what I've got in my heart. So it's in the words of, of Jesus himself. It says, do to others as I, as I have done to you. That's in John chapter 13, verses 15. So what I'm going to do is uh, read from uh, John chapter 13, the whole the whole uh, story, and then uh, we're going to develop the the meeting. The, we're going to develop the subject. What I want to speak to you about. So uh, bear with me. So I'm reading from John chapter 13, verses 1 to 17. Now before the feast of the fer uh, the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come and that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And supper being ended, the devil having already put it to the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, he rose from supper and laid aside his garments. He took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel with which he was girded. Then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What am I doing? You do not understand now, but you will know after this. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He who is bath needs only to wash his feet, but he's completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who would betray him. Therefore he said, You are not all clean. So when he had, when he had washed their feet, taken his garments and sat down again. He said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord. And you say, well, for, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, for you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is, sent, who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Amen. So I just want to, uh, I just want to say that it's incredible to, to know that he is the savior of the world proving himself to be the greatest servant of all times. And uh, the story the story is familiar to many people. But uh, what I want to tell you is that he is the, the, the greatest servant of all times. I just want to tell you a, a little thing about myself. I'm a surfer and uh, I love the sport and uh, knowing that uh, uh, or following all the the contest around the world, I, I, I know that one of the greatest surfers of all time is, is Kenny Slater. But uh, I'm not talking about the greatest surfer, but the greatest servant of all times. And 
everyone you know aspires to be like Kelly Slater and whatever but what really should happen in life is that we should aspire to be like Jesus himself so when I read this passage I was like so touched by and a couple of, 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 of things came to me which I want to share with you uh, is that when the disciples booked the upper room they totally forgot to book a servant and to wash their dirty feet as per custom of those times, you know, they, they were wearing their sandals and they, had, they didn't have closed shoes like we have now. So normally today we, we wash ourselves, we put our closed shoes and we walk from one house. We go to another place of worship water. We've got shoes on. We don't need to take off our shoes and wash our shoes. We're already clean. But in those times, it was the custom as, as you come in through the door, you leave your sandals, you wash your feet. Uh, and then you put your sandals back again, and then you go and sit down. So the, dis the disciples, they, they, they realized that they'd forgotten to rent a servant. None of, none of them volunteered to do the job. Instead, they argued in Luke chapter 22, 24, they argued, who is the, who is the greatest? It's the same story, but different uh, part of the story. You can see that the, the disciples were, were actually saying uh, among themselves, Hey, who is the greatest among us? And they, they really wanted to feel very important because they were walking with Jesus. So when Jesus saw that, he decided to use the opportunity to present an object lesson. After supper, Jesus stripped down to a small piece of cloth around his waist, like an apron, even looking the part of a servant, you know. Then he took a basin full of water and a towel and began washing the feet of his disciples. And this interaction was, was amazing among them. And there's several lessons that, that, uh, that became on, on servant, servanthood that, that became clear to, in, into my mind. So that I, I would like to give you seven points of what a, a, a Christ-like servant and leader is. So a Christ-like servant leader, number, point number one, if you're taking notes, you can just write quickly number one that uh, is the, the Christ-like leader is motivated by love to serve others. In the in chapter in that uh, in that verse one and verse two of chapter thirteen, uh, it says, uh, "Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end." And supper being ended, the devil, having already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. So Jesus, even there was Judas there, even uh, he knew that Judas would betray him. He had an unconditional love. He also washed Simon Iscariot, uh, Judas Iscariot, uh, that God betrayed him later on. I would say that it was amazing. Uh, if I knew that someone would betray me, I would say to that guy, okay, go away. You've got no part of me. Go away. But Jesus still loved that man and uh, washed, washed that guy's feet. For me, that is like mind-boggling. So he's even if a love is undeserved, God's love is, is undeserved. Jesus' love is undeserved. Uh, he still washed Simon his carrots, I mean, uh, Judas' his carrots uh, feet. So his love is, it's an unending love, an ending love. It's an unconditional love. I can't say I've got this kind of love, but I'm aspiring to have that unconditional love. It's also unselfish. It, but I knew from that side that it's it's a love of Jesus that makes you serve somebody, even if you know that he's going to betray you. So my question to you is, what should we do to imitate the Jesus' servant leadership? You know, the, 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 the real servant of Jesus, his, his, his leadership. What should we do? And uh, I came to I came to my answer that we have to put others ahead of our, our own agenda. 
you have to put others. We've got a specific agenda. We've got to do this, do that. We've got a list. But in life, if we want to be like Jesus, we have to put aside our agenda and say, okay, it's not about myself. It's not about, it's not about uh, uh, this person or that person that I really like. But it's about who Jesus has put on my heart to serve. It's about others first. It's that love that's going to, that's that kind of love that, that's going to really make you want to serve the body of Christ or to serve Jesus. And also to serve with, in mind, that your reward is in heaven. And uh, you don't serve to have that kind of, of thing. Oh, did you see me? I did this or I did that. No. Did, did God see me? But I'm doing this with your kind of love, Lord. I want to do it for you. I really want to do it for you, Lord Jesus. So number two, we possess a security that a leader really possesses security that allows them to serve others. There's a security deep down inside of you that rests inside of you that wants you to serve others. The, the leaders that are insecure, they love titles. Sorry to say that, but it's like that. They're a bit like the Pharisees, you know, they want to be recognized, they want to be seen around. The leaders that are secure, they don't worry who's watching. They are secure in, in, in themselves, knowing that Jesus loves them. They're not into titles, but I'd say they are into towels. Jesus' security enables him both to, to stoop and to stretch himself out to, to, to help people. That's the kind of, of security you have when you know that Jesus loves you. That's, that's the, the kind of love that you have for others. It's, it's living yourself, not focusing on yourself. It's to focus on others first. So what should we do to imitate Jesus? To his servant leadership. So we have to develop a confidence and a security in ourselves that will take risk. Take the risk to leave your title behind. This is what I felt for myself. I've got no titles, guys. I'm, I'm a pastor, but I'm not a pastor. I'm a pastor, but um, how can I say? I've got the fraction, but not the title. I'm just working as a pastor. I don't want to be called pastor. I just want to, I just want to be called normally Roger. I'm just doing the work for Christ. I'm a servant. So, let us not try and shine, but let Jesus shine instead of, of us shining. That's what I felt. Okay. So number three, we have to initiate a servant ministry to others. Jesus didn't wait for someone else to stand up and to see the need to be done. He saw the need and he met it. He rose from supper. Let's read from verse four. Uh, he says, uh, excuse me here, uh, a minute. Yeah, he rose from supper and laid aside his garments. He took a towel and girded himself. He saw the need, guys, and he said, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to rise up and I'm going to do it. He didn't wait for somebody else to do it. He said, here's a need. I want to do it. I want to love them to the end. I want to show them that I love them, that I'm going to die for them. And that's the hard attitude that we should have as leaders, as, as, as leaders to lead other people. And uh, we want to, to, to follow after Jesus. We want to be a real good imitator of Jesus. So my question to you again, what do I do to imitate Jesus? Look for a need and take an initiative. So if you, if you take the initiative, if you take the responsibility, you want you want to, you'll stop complaining and you stop saying, well, check this. No one is doing this, man. No. It's not that kind of attitude that you should have. You say, okay, no one is doing it. I'm gonna rise up and I'm gonna be like Jesus and I'm gonna do it. And I'm gonna do it for you, Lord Jesus. I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna do it for people to see me. I'm gonna do it, but my reward is in heaven. And people will see what you do, and, and people will say, Okay, now. I respect that leader. I respect him because he leads by example. And this is how, how people's minds work. But it's true. 
And that's the only way to go is to lead by example. Take off your cloak. Your cloak. There's a, there's a saying in, in, in the Mauritian language that uh, uh, I don't know if I can translate it straight away, but it's like you take off your your your, your coat to go and put your hands uh, to do the dirty job. So um, a lot of people don't want to get their hands dirty to do things, but if you want to be like Jesus, I really believe you have to show that example of a servant, of a true servant. Number four uh, is to receive also ministry from other people, servant ministry from other people. When you think about uh, our, our, our Peter said, no ways, you're not gonna, you're not gonna wash my, my feet or you, you Lord Jesus, you wash my feet, you must, you're my, my hero, you're my servant, you're my master, you're my savior, and you want to wash my feet. It's not gonna be that, it's not gonna be like this. No, I, I want to wash your feet. But Jesus said, listen, unless I wash your feet, you cannot, you cannot have any part in me. I think that, <laughs> that's quite a, a, a a blow in, into Peter's mind because uh, he was a bit proud. He couldn't accept that his master would serve him, and yet Jesus said to him, "If I, if you don't, if you don't wash, if I don't wash you, you have no part in me." So my question is, what do I do? I also have to imitate Jesus, and I, I have to be also like like Peter and say, "Okay, all right, I, I give up." I can receive, I can receive ministry from you as well, you know. So as it is, we have to accept ministry from other people. And uh, so, what what should we do to imitate Jesus? We so we also can perform small acts of service without letting no one know about it. Just be anonymous. Just uh, just know that your reward is in heaven, you know. And let other people minister unto you as well. So, um, my point number five that I've saw in that is that uh, a leader also wants nothing to to to, to hinder the, the, the real relationship with Jesus. So, Peter moved from one extreme to the other extreme. When you think about it, there, yeah, one one moment he was saying, "No, you're not going to wash my feet." And then he says, okay, not only my feet, but my hands and my head, you know. <laughs> so I think he didn't want to miss out on any, anything that Jesus had, had for him, you know, at the time. So, but I think that uh, if we have the attitude of, of, of uh, I'm a bit like Peter, you know, I'm, I'm also putting my hands and my feet into it all the time. I, sometimes I speak too quickly, but uh we have to say sorry okay all right i agree with what you're saying i want to be part of you but i don't want to miss out now maybe maybe you can wash my hands and my head as well you know but uh, i think we have to imitate uh, jesus and also be ministered onto as well and uh, imitate uh, peter and say okay I, I want to receive ministry even though that peter was a leader in that group he eventually said okay i'll receive ministry from my my master. So we need to walk slowly, guys. That's my answer to that, that question. How do we meet that Jesus there? Is we need to walk slowly through the crowd. We have to we have to be careful of what we say. Don't speak too quickly. Don't be like me. I often talk too quickly and, uh, and react too quickly. But what I learned through that is that, hey, hold on. Don't react too quickly. Walk through the crowd. Slowly, this this is the scripture in Proverbs, the, the chapter twenty-eight, verse twenty-five, say telling us not to make not to make rash and and hasty decisions. Show that, you, that it shows that you are not trusting God if you make rash and hasty decisions. But if you, if you rely if you rely totally on God, you will still act carefully. And uh, and with uh, with prudence, 
you will let, you will uh, you will act with uh, prudently. I think we can say prudently in, in English. I think you can say prudently, but uh, we mustn't make rash decisions. Just if you if you show that you trust God, uh, just just walk slowly, just wait a bit, hear from God, and then you act. That's what you need to uh, to learn from that lesson. Uh, Cross-like servants leader number six. Uh, they lead by examples. In verse 12, and let's read verse 12 and verse 15 again. Uh, so when so when he had washed their feet, as Jesus, he had taken his garments and sat down again. He said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for, I, for so I am. So he is a teacher and he is Lord. He admits that he is the teacher and he is the Lord. And if I then, your Lord and teacher, wash your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For well, I've given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. So that's my message. Do as I have done to you. So how do we do that? How do we imitate Jesus? Maybe we should begin our day with reflecting, reflecting us uh, on ourselves, on how, how to love. How, how can I love other people? Just as the morning, in the morning when you get up, you know, you say, Lord, what can I do to, to love other people today? And every day can give you something fresh. Every day you can actually... He can actually say to you, okay, do it this way or do it that way. But if you take the time every day, if you actually say into your into your heart every day, what can I do to love people around me? And open your ears and open your eyes around you and say, Lord, who is it that I'm gonna who is it that I'm gonna love today? And give me an opportunity to show love. Give me an opportunity to to uh, to pour your love on, onto other people and to show them that I am there for them, really. And I know that my reward is in heaven. So I think if we start the day like this, we'll be a success in that, in that avenue of our lives of, 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 of serving, to be a true servant leader. I encourage you to do that. So number seven, <clears throat> Jesus promised us that if we, if we live like that, we, we can have a blessed life. My point number seven is live a blessed life. Jesus reminded his men that if they were blessed and if they ordered him, they would, uh, they would see the blessing coming. If, if, if they obeyed him, if they obeyed what, what he said, they would actually um, have a, a blessed life. So the question again is, how do we imitate Jesus? So we should develop a, 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 a I'd say, a biased mindset to serve others. If we serve people well, we will be blessed. So here's the end of my message. Maybe you're in the category of, of a Pharisee today and, and you say, nobody else should do, should do this and, and that. Um, uh, well, that's not my job, or you know, maybe you, you feel you're too proud. Maybe uh, maybe Jesus is calling you today, you know, to lay down your, your status or your pride, and maybe say, Lord, I want to serve like you have served me. The, the word of God also says, if you want to be great in God's kingdom, you have to be the servant of all. So today I'm challenging you to be like the greatest servant of all times. Not the surfer, but the greatest server, servant of all times. Learn to lay down your rights. Lay down your title. The title, people, there's no security in your title. It's not your security. Your security should be in, in, in Jesus. 
if, if you say, yeah, I'm, I'm this and that, that's because you want to be served. So we should change that. It's, I've got the title, maybe I'm, not the title, but I've got the, I've got the, the um, what's the word? I'm using it. It's the, it's a job, I've got the job, not the title, I've got the job to do, I've got a job to do. And, uh, and to help one another, to, to, to serve one another. If you, if you think that way, it's not a title, but it's a job, it's a job description. To, uh, to lay down your life, lay down your title and, and start serving. And some people have costs, you know, they come from different backgrounds, different uh, countries. And, oh, this cost doesn't mix with this cost because we superior, maybe you feel superior, maybe that's your identity, I don't know. But if you say with your heart, Jesus, I don't want all that kind of, of rubbish in my life. I want to be a servant. I want to, to live like you. If you say that in your heart, if you say, Lord, I need you in my heart because my identity is maybe in surfing. My identity maybe is in the, my ethnic group. My identity maybe is, is uh, what I can do. If it's in what you can do, then you, you owe me that. What about all the rest of you? So I'm encouraging you to, to think that my identity is in Jesus, rather. I'm a servant. So if you've got the heart of a servant, and if you, if you if this is what you want this morning, make me a servant. The, 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 the final crux of the matter is, Lord, make me a servant. If you want to do that, maybe you want to say that prayer today. So I encourage you, maybe from your heart, maybe from... Uh, if you have a sincere heart, you can say, Lord, please make me a servant. Maybe like a servant like, like you. If you can be a servant like Jesus, you will reach many people for Jesus. I promise you. So, I encourage you to do a simple prayer. You say from your heart, you can repeat after me the single prayer. prayer. Jesus, save me from my sin. Save me from that mindset of um, this is my identity. Save me from the mindset of this is my cost. Save me from the mindset of I have sin and I'm no good. I'm asking you, Lord, to wash me in your blood, the blood that was shed on that cross. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Let me be a servant. Let me serve you all my life. Because I want to be your friend. I want to be like you are. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to tell you, if it's the first time that you've made this prayer, Amen. So be it. It is done. Jesus is in your life today. He's in your heart. I want to say congratulations. It's the best decision that you've made all your life. You have received Jesus in your heart. You've laid down of your past. You said no to your past. You want Jesus to take control of your life. That's the best decision that you could have done. So if you've made that prayer today, we would like to get back to you and uh, if, if you especially if you need prayer or counseling, please write to us and, and leave a comment, a comment and leave you your telephone number or, or a, a, a where we can contact you and we can pray with you then. We can uh, give you some counsel if you need. And I just want to say thank you for listening and have a great Sunday and may God bless you and may keep you and make his face from today shine upon you and give you grace and may he turn his face towards you and your family and may he give you peace, the peace that passes all human understanding. Amen. Goodbye.